My name is uh, John Gensel. I'm an assistant professor here at the University of Kentucky. I'm in the departments of uh, physiology and also in the spinal cord and brain injury research center. And I am the PI for a lab uh, that studies spinal cord injury called Neuroinflammation and Endogenous Repair. Oh yeah, or the Neuro Lab. So I grew up in uh, Western Maine. I went to school trying to get out of the woods a little bit in Philadelphia at the University of Pennsylvania for undergrad and uh, sort of had my trek going across the United States. I went to Ohio State for uh, graduate school and stayed there for a postdoc. And actually became faculty there for a short time before my route across the United States kind of changed a little bit and I went down to Kentucky and I've been here for about four years now. My dad is a pastor now and my mom is pretty involved in social work. So I, I started out as an engineer. That really just didn't work for me. I don't think I would have been able to finish if I'd stayed there, you know. Um, I switched into to a more or less neuroscience degree. It was called the Biological Basis of Behavior. And I was still in the pre-med track, and I remember meeting with some students when I was a junior, and they said, you should really do some research. It's good for your, you know, it's good for your CV if you're going to go to med school. And uh, I contacted a bunch of professors there, and one, Tracy McIntosh, uh, was willing to take me on as an undergrad, and I started getting my own projects and stuff. And that's really where, that's really where the switch happened. That, that research experience that I got as an undergraduate completely changed my perspective, and, uh, you know, I really didn't consider med school again. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I kind of do it all. You know, at this stage, I've been here now four years running my own lab almost, and I'm a little less involved in day-to-day -day lab work in terms of techniques, but I'm, you know, in the lab every day talking to people and answering questions and stuff. You know, I like the fact that there's a pretty diverse way I spend my day. So, you know, part of it is working and revising papers that we may be working on and working on grants. I have a small amount of teaching that I do. And I interact with my lab people. I have an open door policy and people come in. And so it's, there's constant change. We meet as a group every week to discuss all the projects going on. We want the, you know, contribution of the team intellect to drive the projects. You know, it's exciting when you have a hypothesis and it comes out to be true, you know. And, you know, probably recently it was that we started giving a type of therapy and we, you know, it worked when we would give it before we, uh, you know, test it in spinal cord injury. And then, but, we, but in order to be, you know, have efficacy in, in the clinical aspect, we really need to be able to give it after injury. And uh, I remember the day that we, we first pulled the data from that and that sort of post-treatment effect was there. And so in that sense, uh, you know, from the, you know, you know, proving your hypotheses, starting to develop things that actually have, you know, potential to, to have an impact in a, in a clinical setting. Those things are the most really exciting. My lab is at a stage where we're still early. You know, we don't have a lot of really senior people that have been in the lab for decades. And so we're bringing in people. We have graduate students and undergraduates. And so how do I, as the mentor of this lab, balance the nurturing environment to give them the ability to fail and learn while also, you know, providing them with the guidance that they need to complete their projects but not micromanaging them. So um, those are, are some of the biggest challenges, I think. So, I mean, the overall goal of the lab is really to try to figure out how to harness the reparative capabilities of inflammation in the context of spinal cord injury. So, you know, a spinal cord injury is like any injury you receive. There's an inflammatory response. If you get a skin wound, there's redness and inflammation. Uh, and over time, in, the, in a skin wound, let's say, that repairs itself in a certain way and that inflammation goes away. Um, that doesn't happen in a spinal cord injury or with most neurotrauma. That inflammation remains. And so there are certain aspects of that inflammatory response that can facilitate repair and certain aspects that potentiate pathology. And so our goal is to really find out what different physiological factors regulate the reparative or pathological balance. How does sex and age at the time of injury affect those things? And then how can we gain insights into developing therapies for that? And so um, our work is, you know, the overall goal is to, to improve the lives of individuals with spinal cord injury when you use basic science models to study inflammation and develop therapies that we can translate into a clinical population. Broader questions, you know, down the road 10, 15, 20 years from now, you know, our hope is really to to understand the biological mechanisms that regulate beneficial inflammatory repair processes and be able to tap in those with therapeutics that will be applied across a variety of neurological diseases.